Can you imagine a better start to any move to Old Trafford other than scoring on your debut? Well, 112 United players have achieved this feat since records began, sometime over our 144-year history. From Jack Doherty in October 1886 against Fleetwood Rangers to Anthony earlier this season against Arsenal, how many of the 112 went on to have great United careers? This tier ranking aims to check out who kicked on and who did well in terms of, say, goals, appearances, silverware won and what kind of status they hold amongst United fans in general, and to those who never fulfilled such promise. Before I begin, I want to give a massive shout out to MUFCinfo.com and the brilliant red who tirelessly runs it, Mark Graham. It would have been so much harder to attempt this without his supreme efforts on his brilliant site to use as a reference. Also, don't worry, I won't be going through all the 112 United goal-scoring debutants. There are some restrictions. The players must have played a minimum of 50 games for a start, which means no Federico Makeda, no Keith Gillespie, Henrik Larsson, or the aforementioned Anthony, of course. Also, purely due to a lack of information, we're excluding a number of our early players. All the post-war goal-scoring debutant over 50 games club will be joined by a select few from our first 60-odd years. It will be more of a subjective ranking than the previous ones, like the United Captains ranking, for instance. So please feel free to have your say in the comments below. Each one of them will be ranked in one of the five tiers. Legendary Red Devil, Excellent, Good, Mediocre and Poor. So off we go, working backwards with the most recent United player to make 50 plus appearances and scoring his debut, Donny van der Beek. Donny van der Beek came to United from Ajax for 35 million plus, 5 million pounds worth of add-ons back in 2020 and scored on his debut against Palace, coming on as a late sub in a 2-1 defeat. Unfortunately for him, despite a lot of support from United fans like me, after seeing glimpses of his Ajax brilliance early on, he never really nailed down a first-team place, especially in a side that was struggling. Even after Oli was ousted, Ralph Ranjit took over, didn't pick him, and now his ex-boss, Eric Ten Hag, he doesn't pick him either. Currently, he's on 57 games, scoring two goals. So it's a poor start, unfortunately, for this list as Donny van der Beek goes in the poor tier. Next up is Dan James, a more unusual signing than Donny van der Beek. At least Donny van der Beek came with the reputation. Dan James came from Swansea with pace. He scored on his debut against Chelsea in a 4-0 win, a late, slightly deflected goal with his nine goals in 74 games, which isn't terrible for a player in his position, a winger. He never looked like United player. He's, he's very fast, but he just didn't have the skill, the technique, the ability, but he had the passion, which the side was lacking. So I'm going to move him. I want to put him in mediocre because rather than poor, because I think he's had a lot better time than Donny van der Beek. And also he had some good games, scored some decent goals. Next up, a player who has the, the skills, the ability to uh, cut out United, but he just didn't have the will, the mindset. And that was Romelu Lukaku. 75 million plus 15 million in add-ons. He came to United in 2017, and his debut goal was against Real Madrid in the Super Cup in a 2-1 defeat. Whatever you might think of the guy, got 42 goals in 96 games. Now, a decent amount of those were in games where we were already 2-0 up, 3-0 up. Him and his friendship with a toxic Paul Pogba seemed to change his attitude in a club where he could have done really, really well and we needed someone like him to put the ball in the back of the net. So we moved him on back to Inter, overweight, and he started doing the business for them over there. So it goes to show he really didn't put the effort in at Old Trafford. So I'm going to put him as mediocre. Next up before that, do you remember? It was the year before. It was Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who came on a free from PSG. Now Zlatan lifted the dressing room. Even from the first game, he made an impact. He scored in that debut win against Leicester City in the Charity Shield. And that was his first piece of silverware in his first game. He had that Cantona-esque talismanic quality about him. He wasn't just the 29 goals in 53 games. Many of them were important. It was the fact that he lifted a decent side, not a great side, a decent side, a side that won silverware, up to the next level. And he got a League Cup and Community Shield where he was at key in the games, scoring winning goals. And then there was the Europa League, which he was injured for. He was only at the club for a year. That's my problem with him. And so if I put him anywhere more than good, what does that say for other players who will come after him who did a lot more? Now we have the first player on this list to come from the youth side, Marcus Rashford. As you'll remember, he burst onto the scene during an injury crisis under Louis van Gaal's tenure with two goals versus FC Mitterland in a 5-1 win in Europe. He followed that up with goals against Arsenal in the league. He just brought a new lease of life to the squad. He collected all the post-Fergie trophies so far, which is the League Cup, Europa League, Community Shield and an FA Cup. 
is a centurion now with 101 goals in 322 appearances. Not the best or worst goals per game ratio, but he's still a very good player. And I think that he's got a lot more to contribute. He's only, what is it, 25 now? Under Ten Hag, he looks like he could actually go forward, I mean. Has he been excellent? Now, that's the thing. If I was willing to think about putting Ibrahimovic into excellent and he played a season and you had several seasons of Rashford, who was at least the same level. I mean, obviously doesn't have quite that, that flair that Ibrahimovic has. I'm going to put him at excellent. I'm going to be quite generous with him. Next up, we have Anthony Martial, who came to Old Trafford at the same time as um, Rashford started. And he scored in that famous 3-1 win over Liverpool with that rocking goal. He just hit the ground running. Like Rashford. Rashford, he's won all those four trophies, scored vital goals, but he also went off the boil in a similar way to, to Rashford. Although Rashford just looked bereft of confidence, he looked disinterested. Now, his contribution in that time, 276 games and 83 goals, and he's not got quite got himself back into the boss's um, starting 11, but he's on his way. So I'm going to give him a good, I mean, again, you can think this is very generous and it's a fan favourite who was the goal-scoring debutant before Martial. It was Javier Hernandez. Well, another surprise package from nowhere. A snip, just £7 million from club Deportivo Guadalajara. He scored in a 3-1 charity shield win over Chelsea. And again, he just had that thing that Dan James had, that enthusiasm for the club, that just passion for playing and love of scoring goals. And he joined in 2010. So he still had the back end of Fergie's era. He was at the club for five years and has a very nice goal-scoring record of 59 goals in 157 games, considering... He did play a lot of sub in those days. Taking two league titles just really showed his quality. He was a bit like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He's considered to be a bit of a super sub, but he had great technique and ability and a really good knack of scoring goals. And I'm going to put him in excellent along with Rashford. I don't think I can put him in the same level as Zlatan. Before Javier Hernandez, the next in line which came six years before. Prodigy, a precocious player, amazing spirit, amazing ability. A £27 million acquisition from Everton. Wayne Rooney became club captain, record goal scorer, and a winner of five Premier Leagues, an FA Cup, three League Cups, four Community Shields, one Champions League, Europa League, and a FIFA World Club Cup. This man is a legend. The stats speak for themselves. And this is a guy who sacrificed playing in his preferred position to drop deeper when necessary and play that support role up front or even into midfield later in his career this man deserves to be in the legendary red devil level click on the link in the description for the video that i did on him Gabriel Heinz, who was a very gifted left back who we signed from PSG back in 2004. Scoring on his debut in a two-all draw at Bolton, the Argentinian seemed to be a fine replacement for Dennis Irwin. However, after having an extended period of out of action through injury, and along with the arrival of Patrice Evra, he lost his place. With the ignorance of the history and rivalry between us and them, he demanded a move to Anfield, and that was his death knell at the club. Fergie gave him his wish and let him go, but not to Anfield, but the Bernabeu. Anyway, with the Premier League and a bad attitude to his name, I will give him a mediocre rather than good. The Liverpool request has knocked him down a place. In the same year, a young striker who seemed to be Leeds through and through was a surprise move to Old Trafford. Alan Smith signed for £7 million as United took advantage of Leeds' precarious financial position. Unfortunately, Smith scored on his debut in a 3-1 charity shield defeat to Arsenal. Always given 100% on the pitch as he'd done the Ellen Road, the United fans really took to him. Unfortunately, terrible injury at Anfield kept him out for eight months. This cut short his Old Trafford stint and so affects his ranking. However, I think good is a fair assessment. If he'd only not got injured, he could have been so much better. And I'm not putting him on the same level as Lukaku and Heinze. The year before Alan Smith came to Old Trafford, Fergie, for the only time I've ever heard him do this, asked his squad who the hardest striker was who they've had to play against. Several of the defenders, including Gary Neville, stated that it was this man, Louis Sahar, and the boss promptly signed him from Fulham for almost 13 million quid. Saha's debut came against Southampton in a 3-2 win, and he'd go on to get 42 goals in 124 matches over the next five years. Like Alan Smith, he was plagued by injuries, but fortunately for him, he has a couple more winners' medals than the Yorkshireman, picking up a League Cup and a Champions League, despite not even making the bench for the final for the latter of those. Eventually, Louis left for Everton, unable, like Smith, to fulfil his potential due to bad luck, and so is another good United player.
Someone who wasn't just a good player for United was a goal-scoring debutant who had to delay his move to Old Trafford for a season after injuring himself in 2000, just before he was about to sign. However, Ruud van Nistelrooy did join and scored on his debut in 2001, his goal coming in a 2-1 charity shield loss to Liverpool. Now on a personal note, I've been supporting the club since the mid-80s and he is the most complete striker I've ever seen to pull on our famous old jersey. His 150 goals in 219 games for us seems to be a little bit light for what I remember, but what I do recall is not seeing a better finisher than the Dutchman. Rude picked up each one of the four domestic honours but left Old Trafford prematurely after a training ground bust up with Ronaldo and with some ill-chosen words he aimed at the young lad who just lost his father. I still consider him a club legend despite only being five years with us and so there he goes, a legendary Red Devil. Another Old Trafford legend was the debut score against Blackburn in 1996 in a 2-all draw. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was, and is more than that, winning goal in 99. He was a precocious goal scorer who came from nowhere, Molde in the Norwegian League, to score 126 times in 366 appearances, many off the bench. Oli was the top scorer in his first season in the Premier League with 19 goals, helping us win the title. He went on to win five more championships as well as two FA Cups, two Charity Shields, the Champions League obviously, and an Intercontinental Cup. When he was bumped for arguably better forwards who came after, he never bitched or whinged, he never was someone who had a problem renewing his contract and had the great combination of having the technique and ability to score goals and to be a good soldier and squad player for the boss. Injuries later in his career cut short what could have been even better stats. This is a legendary Red Devil. His managerial career isn't a factor in this and the abuse he received at that time was disgusting. Anyway, he gets a top-notch position in my ranking. One of our greatest homegrown players scored in a debut win against Port Vale in the League Cup in 1994. Paul Scholes played over 19 years at Old Trafford, racking up a massive 718 matches and 155 goals. However, those cracking figures understate his contribution on the pitch from midfield or the number 10 role, where his passing was as good as anyone who's ever played at Old Trafford for any side. The ginger genius won 25 pieces of silverware for the club, including a massive 11 Premier League titles, three FA Cups, two Champions Leagues, two League Cups, as well as other trinkets. If you want to know more or reminisce about this Oldham lad, there's a link in the description below to a Legends video that I made on him. Anyway, Scholes, who retired in 2013, gets his legendary Red Devil status. Danny Wallace was a brilliant winger at Southampton, able to turn on against any opposition with great pace and flair, which is even more remarkable as he's 5'4". Fergie, trying to reinvigorate the attack, bought him for £1.3 million in September 1989, at a time when the side was really struggling. His debut goal came in a 3-2 win at Fratton Park in the League Cup soon afterwards, but he rarely replicated that Southampton form over the next four years as the side evolved with more emphasis put on youth and pace for Fergie's side's wing play, and Danny could well have been starting to be affected by the symptoms of his crippling MS. That said, he did score 11 goals in 71 matches, and this was integral in the 1990 Cup run with his goals and assists, and catapulted the side forward to what it was under Fergie in the mid-90s. Danny also won a charity shield and a Cup winner's Cup medal as a non-playing sub. Moving on to Birmingham City in 93, still in his prime, his condition was limiting his playing time and he had to retire at 31. Sadly, only a mediocre United player for this list. Arriving a month or so before Wallace, Neil Webb made his debut against Champions Arsenal in a 4-1 win in August 89, announcing himself at Old Trafford with a cracking volley. Personally, I was very pleased with the signing of Webb, who was already a first-choice England international and had been keen Cluffy's re-emerging Forest side that started to pick up silverware in the late 80s. However, an Achilles tendon injury picked up on England duty against Sweden soon after his arrival meant that he was never the same player afterwards. Again, like Danny Wallace, once back, he was key in that 1990 Cup success, but always seemed to be the third choice in the centre of midfield if Ince and Robbo were fit. On top of the FA Cup, Neil won at League Cup, Super Cup and Cup Winners' Cup as a non-playing sub, and Neil got 110 appearances for 11 goals. Neil Webb went back to Forest at the beginning of the 92-93 season and ultimately got relegated with him. His sale, though, helped fund Eric Cantona's move to Old Trafford a week or so later. Unsurprisingly, Neil Webb is also a mediocre United player and goes into that slot against his former teammate. Now on to the first United debutant scorer since I started supporting the club back in the mid 80s, Gordon Strachan. We Gordo had played under Fergie at Aberdeen as a tricky little midfielder. They'd been quite successful, in fact very successful, although the two men personally often didn't meet eye to eye. So it was a relief to the young Scott to go and play his trade south of the border, as United boss Big Ron Atkinson signed him for 600 grand in the summer of 1984. He scored a penalty on his debut in a one-all draw against Graham Taylor's Watford, who equalised late on. By the end of that campaign, he had his first and only piece of silverware at Old Trafford, the FA Cup. 
Strachan stayed at United for another five years until it was Fergie again less than two years after becoming manager who would sell him on to Leeds. A player of flair who scored some lovely goals and gave a killer pass or two, Gordon did go through some threadbare periods as well in his time at the club. Therefore, I can only give him a good rating. It was another diminutive Scottish midfielder before Gordon who was the previous debut scoring United player with excess of 50 games in his career for the club. But we have to go back 11 years to fan favourite Lou Macari. Lou was a £200,000 acquisition by the dock in 1973 from Celtic and his debut United goal came in a draw 2-2 against West Ham. Staying for over a decade, if you were part of the dock's red and white army back in the 70s, you love this little player. With 97 goals in 401 appearances as well as an FA Cup, Charity Shield and a second division title, Lou stood out in a decade that often had more downs than ups for the club. As I didn't see him play myself, I asked my dad about United Facebook group what they thought of him. And to a man, nothing but legend, legend, legend. So who am I to argue? So Red Devils legend it is. Now two years earlier in Ulsterman, the last Busby babe, Sammy McElroy, scored a famous goal on his debut in a 3 all draw in the Manchester Derby. Again, it's another player I didn't see like everyone else on the rest of this video. But from what I've seen on YouTube, I feel that this midfielder is a vastly underrated player for the club, apart from maybe for the Reds who saw him at the time. Like Lou, 11 years service, 419 games and 71 goals, including a world-class solo goal in the 1979 Cup Final. He also had the same silverware haul of FA Cup, Charity Shield, Second Division Championship. Leaving the club in 82 for Stoke, like Lou, I can only see Sammy Mack as a United legend, but feel free to tell me below if I've not got a little carried away. Oops. Alan Gowling is the first player in the 60s we're going to cover and he's another home ground lad. The forward scored in a 4-2 win over Stoke City and left the club for Huddersfield four years later with a decent ratio of a goal every four games. Having trying to wrestle the starting place from the Holy Trinity was too much of an ask and I suppose that means he only gets a mediocre rating from me. Next to Neil Webb. In contrast, up next is the King and the most unsurprising entrant onto this tier ranking. Dennis Law scored on his United debut in 1962, of course, against West Brom, which ended up as a two-all draw. Coming from Torino for 110 grand, probably the best fee spent by United in their history, King Dennis ruled his Mancunian kingdom for 11 years, scoring 237 goals in just 404 appearances. In that time, he earned the club captaincy as well as two league titles, an FA Cup, the club's inaugural European Cup, which he had to sit out due to his persistent knee injury and two charity shields. Again, waiting for you in the description is a link to the Legends video I did on Dennis Law with his whole story in more detail. Anyway, we all know how it ended. A free transfer across the city, relegation for United and his last kick in English League football beat his former club on his old stomping ground. Anyway, it's legendary Red Devil status for the greatest Scot. Mancunian Shea Brennan scored on his debut in the first match after the Munich air disaster, the 3-0 win over Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup in February 1958. Usually playing from full-back, the Irish international played over 12 seasons for United, racking up 359 appearances and 6 goals. He also earned two First Division titles, a European Cup and two Charity Shields. Shea doesn't have the gravitas of the Holy Trinity, but his contribution was exceptional. That said, I'm going to be a bit controversial and state that Shea Brennan is the excellent tier for this one and not quite a legend. Alex Dawson is a United striker who doesn't get enough credit for his abilities. Another Busby babe and a fellow Scot, Dawson made his debut for the club in the back end of the championship winning 56-57 season, scoring on his debut against Burnley and then getting on the score sheet in his next two matches against Cardiff and West Brom respectively as the boys romped to the title. Alex, like his other younger teammates who avoided the Munich air disaster, got more opportunities after the tragedy. Over the next few years, Dawson scored an impressive 54 goals in 93 matches and when he was eventually sold on in 19. 61 to Preston, he continued that form to better than a goal every other game. Alex may deserve better, but I'm putting him into the good tier ranking. Love to hear some stories about him if you've got them in the comments below. Bobby Charlton scored a brace on his debut against Charlton and eventually became the personification of the club. A youth player nurtured by Busby and especially Jimmy Murphy, who was a regular in the side when Munich happened, wiping out his teammates and friends. Whilst it took him a little time to come to terms with the disaster, so Bobby led the side with ability, personality and eventually the captain's armband as he won everything worth winning in the game three league titles an fa cup in 63 two charity shields and of course lifting the european cup in dennis law's absence and the world cup too by the time he left the club 19 years after his debut he held the club records for goal scoring and appearance making with 249 strikes in 758 matches check out my video on sir bobby in the description and i'll put the great man into the legends tier of course 
Another legend, arguably the finest goal scorer we ever had, or at least someone who would have given King Dennis a run for his money, Tommy Taylor made his debut with a brace against Preston in a 5-2 win in 1953. With his life cut short at Munich, we'll never know if the boy who came from Barnsley for £29,999 would have won more than his two league titles and two charity shields. What we do know is that he would have added greatly to his tally of 131 goals in 191 matches, especially if he'd continued with his foil of having the other Dennis, Dennis Viola, up front with him. Leaving a couple of weeks after his 26th birthday I should also add that he played 19 times for England scoring 16. There is no doubt where this man deserves to be. Now on to the next red who most of you would know the least about on this list and I include my pre-war selection in that and that is John Downey. Downey joined United from Bradford Park Avenue in 1949 and like Sir Bobby got his debut against Charlton Athletic. Bought as a replacement for the sublime Johnny Morris. John scored a credible 37 goals in 116 appearances for United which helped the club greatly when Busby took the league title for the first time in 52. John also scored in the subsequent Charity Shield win over Cup Winners Newcastle, 4-2, but that wasn't enough to keep his place, and it was Tommy Taylor's arrival that heralded his departure to Luton Town in 1953. John deserves a good ranking. We may not have ever heard of him, most of us at least, but he made a grand contribution. The last player to be a goal-scoring debutant in the post-war period and to have played at least 50 times for United is Andy Mitten's great uncle, the legendary Charlie Mitten. Charlie was part of the famous five attacking lineup that thrilled United and non-United fans alike in the immediate post-war period. Joining the club as a trainee, he scored on his debut against Grimsby Town in a 2-1 win. Surprisingly, he stayed for just four years, leaving the club for the attraction of far better salary terms in Colombia, which finally got himself labelled as the Bogota Bandit, as the 12 quid a week maximum salary was not enough for him quite a contrast to today anyway busby didn't want him back after it all went south in colombia for mitten and he was eventually allowed to join fulham once the fines had been paid and the suspension served for his actions anyway he still goes into the legendary tier meager consolation i know Enoch West joined United from Forest in 1910 and scored in his debut against Arsenal in a 2-1 win. The centre forward was on United's books until the outbreak of the war, with his career being cut short at just 29 due to that and a betting scandal involving Liverpool, which allegedly helped a struggling United side escape relegation to the second division. West always protested his innocence at the charges. However, he did earn a league championship winner's medal in 1911 and hit the back of the net 80 times in 181 matches for the club. I think that Enoch fits into the good tier for this list. There he is. Harold House joined United from Southend in 1907 and scored in the first minute of his debut against the Wednesday. The forward had a solid goal scoring record with 56 strikes in 125 matches and he collected all the silverware the club won in its first purple patch with two league titles, an FA Cup and a charity shield in which he scored six goals in an 8-4 win over Swindon. Leaving for Villa in 1912 where he won the cup again, Harold House was an excellent United player. Sandy Turnbull. He was a top United striker whose career was plagued by scandal. As part of the successful Manchester City side that was broken up due to a betting scandal in 1905, Sandy Turnbull was snatched up by United manager Ernest Magnell in 1906. He scored on his debut against Aston Villa and, like Harold House, helped the club to its initial trophy winning success. It was Sandy's goal in the 1909 Cup Final against Bristol City, despite carrying injury, that gave the club its only second piece of silverware. Another centurion, the Scotsman scored 101 goals in 247 appearances, before being one of the players accused of match-fixing, like teammate Enoch West. Facing a ban of an indeterminate amount of time, Turnbull signed up for military action during World War I and lost his life tragically at Arras in France in May 1917, aged just 32. He was posthumously reinstated as a player at the Conflicts end. Regardless of the charges, Sandy Turnbull remains an Old Trafford legend. George Wall was another United player of the era who helped the side to great success. Joining from Barnsley in 1905 when the club were in the second division, George scored on his debut in a 1-0 win over Leighton Orient. A centurion again, George scored 100 goals in 319 matches for United and won the customary two league titles, an FA Cup and Charity Shield, but before all that, got the club promoted behind Bristol City into the top flight. He lost the best years of his career to the Great War, where he signed up for military action and joined the famous Black Watch Regiment. He survived the conflict, joining Oldham at the end of the war, but his brother Thomas, the United Reserve, was not so lucky and fell. Despite not seeing him play, George Wall was another excellent United player. The final player on this list is the furthest back that I'd like to venture, and it's for a right half of all positions, and that man was Dick Duckworth. 
Mancunian, who joined the club as a trainee, Dick Duckworth was a one-club man, playing until the league programme stopped for the Great War in 1915, when he was 32. Dick won everything that was there to be won, including the aforementioned promotion to the top flight. He earned a pair of league titles, Charity Shield and FA Cup, with his solid contribution to the half-back lineup that was also made up of Alex Bell and Captain Charlie Roberts. Playing 254 matches and scoring just 11 goals, Dick Duckworth was a formidable presence in his day. His name should be known far better than it is for his contribution to your club's fortunes. Anyway, I'm honouring him with a legend's place. And that's it. Here are the 32 players chosen for the ranking and where they sit after their United careers turned out, despite scoring on their debuts. What do you think? Were there any oversights or was I too generous, too mean with my assessments? Please comment below and like, share and subscribe. Thank you as ever for your support.